Bonjour. Hi, everyone. Miss Bonongo Kwein Dijnikas, Mgizi and Dodem. So, hi, everyone. My name is Joanne Robertson, and I live in Northern Ontario in Canada. And today, I'm um, at the lagoon uh, where I live, um, which is um, actually an, old, an oxbow lake. So, I thought it'd be nice filming out here. It's not snowing today, so a little chilly, but nice out. So, um, I had the honor of writing and illustrating uh, this picture book, The Water Walk, that's being fe featured this month. And it's about my friend, uh, Josephine Baumendamen, the water walker. And I went to school with Josephine Ba, and um, I went to university with her. And in 2011, I helped coordinate uh, the Four Directions Water Walk, where we walked in from the Four Salt Waters to Lake Superior. And by this point, she had already walked around all the Great Lakes. She started that in uh, 2003, and then they started with um, Lake Superior. And during water walks, um, my role in that is I help, first of all, I help um, with SPOT, which is a GPS unit, which is on the side of the water pail, or pails, in 2011 there were four of them. And spot updates on a map online every 10 minutes so if you're following along or if you want to bring food to the walkers or just find out where they are to um, encourage them you can go online and you can see where they're at all the time when the water's moving um, up also besides spot during the 2011 walk and her 2015 and 17 walks I also helped find lodging and food and anything that they needed on the road. Uh, Grandma Josephine Ba would um, contact me and ask us to help. And there were lots of helpers. Um, but 2011, I was, she used to call me Central Communications. So in the beginning, I mentioned in 2003, that's when Josephine Ba started her water walks. And at that time, she was 60 years old. And she started... Uh, like I mentioned, walking around Lake Superior. And at that time, there were only a handful of them. Here comes my dog, Lucy. She's covered in mud. She's down playing at the... Come here, my lady. Come here. <laughs> okay, come here. Good girl. She's down playing at the beaver pond. So where was I? So like there were four of them, or a handful of them, that started out in that walk in 2003 around Lake Superior. And every spring after that, uh, they walked around another, a different, uh, one of the Great Lakes. And they finished up with um, walking the um, St. Lawrence River. And yeah, so there's all the, all the Great Lakes in the book. The, the book came out um, a month after her final walk in 2017. That fall, we got to visit some schools and we were in Thunder Bay, her community where she lived and uh, visiting one school. And the gym was full of all the students. And um, one of the students in grade eight asked how many people walked during her final walk, knowing that there were only a handful of them that started in 2003. And she said that there were over a thousand people that joined them in the 2017 walk. This is an important story to share, I think, be, because of a few reasons. Uh, one of them is, it. I think Grandmother Josephine Ba's work really illustrates um, how one person can make a difference. And keeping in mind that she wasn't a really young thing and she was 60 years old when she started and she walked across Turtle Island numerous times um, because she was so committed to uh, protecting the water and getting the word out that water um, needed us to uh, stop our negligence towards it. So that's one of the big things. Um, one person can make a difference. Um, and the Mother Earth Water Walkers, that's what they were called um, as, a, as a collective. Um, but Josephine Ba, she was a lot of the times the lead walker and she was the one that was called upon uh, most frequently to um, go to public engagements and, and speak about the water and the work that they were doing. Um, something else that Nokomis's uh, work uh, clearly shows is that um, actions speak louder than words. Um, she led by example and she literally left 
millions of footsteps for us to follow in. And she showed what courage, commitment, and determination really looks like. And you can remember that there were only a handful of them that started out in 2003. But in the end, there were over a thousand people doing that work. And now there's even more people around the world doing that work. Um, even during 2011, I received emails from all over the world in support of the work that the Mother Earth Water Walkers were doing. Uh, something that came out of this that um, you all might be interested in too is um, a, a young group in Thunder Bay, a group of students. Um, they were inspired to uh, pick up her work and to do something and now they're collectively called the Junior Water Walkers and there's Junior Water Walkers all over the world now and they were started by grade five and six students in Thunder Bay, Ontario. So, um, She's, she's inspired the next generation to, to do something for the water. And why do we walk for the water? Um, as we all know, water we can't live without water. Without water, we die. Um, but water isn't just uh, for us humans. All our relatives, like the cedar tree, um, all the trees, the animals, the birds, we all, they all need clean water too. And there's Lucy barking at a squirrel. So squirrels need clean water too. Um, but we all need water. And also we're thinking seven generations ahead, not just seven days, seven months, seven years ahead. We're thinking of our future generations, like our great, great grandkids into the future. You know, like um, we want them to know that we did our best to take care of the water so that they would have clean water. Um, and by sharing the story, um, Milkomus Josephine Boss story here, the water walker. Um, I hope uh, that you're inspired to take care of the water too. And one good thing is too, like I said, I'm at home now and this is the lagoon um, at my home that I like to visit. So I think it would be really good to get to know what water is by your home or by your school, what the water closest to you. So get to know that water get to learn what's threatening the health of that water um, and what gifts or talents uh, do you have that you can use to protect the water near you so maybe you sit down and reflect on that so you could draw about when you visit the water go home and draw about what you've seen with the water who who's there at that water are there ducks did you see a beaver fish I just saw four ducks fly away when I got here this morning and over here to my left on the shore here there's a um, a, a beaver house being built out off the dam and there's a few small trees that the beavers cut down all around me here. It's a really nice place. So get to know the area where the water is and what's threatening it. And you can, like I said, you draw about what you've seen or write stories about it. Even make up songs about the water in your area. Think, use the gifts that you have uh, to share what you've learned and to um, make a promise to take care of the water near where you are. So I hope that Nokomisleth's story has inspired you to do something to protect Nibe. And Chimigwitch, and thanks for taking care of Nibe in advance, and thanks for tuning in this month. And also I want to thank, um, I have to get this right because it's long, <laughs> I also want to thank the Eco Bookworms Book Club. Um, at the American Public Health Association Center for Climate, Health and Equity for featuring the Water Walker this month of, in honor of Native American Heritage Month. So, chimigwitch everyone. Bon